Hi, this is Kevin Trainer. Welcome to my tutorial on um, creating the uh, the practice assignment for the high fidelity prototype. So um, I decided to do my uh, prototype, my practice uh, prototype on. Um, the attendance uh, uh, system that I've been uh, designing uh, for my students at UWM for some time. Um, whether it would actually be implemented, I don't know. We keep, uh, As we go from course to course, we keep getting closer and closer, so perhaps it will be. It's an alternative to uh, manual sign-in sheets for um, on-campus uh, classes. And what we're looking at here is we're looking at a part of a use case uh, diagram for um, the system. And um, uh, the use cases that we have here, we have, um, I packaged them up into, into three different uh, pages. The student-facing use uh, cases, uh, the instructor facing use at cases and then the administrative use uh, cases. So uh, it, it, the instructor one was uh, I think a little too tall of a task at this point so I didn't quite want to do that. So I decided what I wanted to do was uh, part of the student facing use uh, cases this log attendance. So the two things that students are able to do with the system is that they're able to log their attendance and they are able to generate a report that says what their attendance has been. Okay. Um, now, um, one of the interesting things is I decided to do another use case because uh, Logging into this application is a pretty big deal for the students. And I decided I was going to do both the login use case as it applied to the student and this log attendance. And then I realized that my naming had not been well chosen. So as I was uh, working on the prototype, I, I changed the name of, of the use case from log attendance to report attendance. Okay, uh, so um, I thought that was a good kind of a shakeout of the uh, prototyping because it was, it was kind of hard to have some things called login and some things called log and it's just uh, too much potential confusion. So the, the other use case that I'm doing in this uh, prototype, again, we're not doing any of the instructor facing ones. We're doing the uh, login, and the login works for any system user. But what I wanted to do was to make sure that we had all the functionality prototype for the student user who needed to log in. OK? So that's what we're doing here. Um, it would have been nice if I had had a use case specification for login and one for um, the other one, uh, log attendance as I had been calling it. Uh, but I only had a use case uh, a specification for log attendance, so I'm going to show you that. So this is a uh, use case specification. Um, this is a pretty popular format for them. Uh, this is a document format that came from IBM. And uh, yeah, it really represents kind of the mainstream of uh, uh, what one would put into a use case uh, specification. So um, we get down to the meat of it, right? And maybe we'll make this a little bigger so you can see it. But um, it's called log attendance, although I've already told you I've changed the name to report attendance. Uh, 
And so there's a brief uh, description and a flow of events. And it's the flows that are really important. Um, we have a basic flow, which uh, describes the so-called happy days scenario where everything goes well. Uh, and um, we have these alternative uh, flows, which uh, take over at certain points in the basic flow when we have either uh, alternate conditions or error conditions and uh, that kind of stuff. So um, ideally, we want to be able to implement uh, the basic flow and the alternate flows in the prototype. So the basic flow of the use case begins when student signals that she wishes to log attendance. Uh, system displays a list of classes in which the student is registered. The student selects a class for which he wishes uh, to log attendance. The system requests the class meeting password. The idea here is that the um, the idea here is that the uh, password is going to be the thing that proves that you were actually in the class. So I'm going to display the password on the board, or um, that's probably what I would do if it was uh, going to be the same uh, password for the entire uh, period that we're there. But if I really want to uh, uh, prevent uh, cheating, which would be to uh, convey the password to students who, who, who are not there. So they could pretend, say, from home to be, uh, to be there. Uh, perhaps I could have a way of uh, displaying a password that changes, say, once a minute on the screen. And so the life of the password might be uh, uh, just a minute or so instead of the entire period, and perhaps that would cut down on cheating either, even further. Uh, but for right now, it's just a single password. Um, so they uh, they type in the, blast, uh, the uh, password. Um, the system confirms the, the student has successfully logged attendance, and the use case ends. Uh, great. Uh, the only change that I'm envisioning here is that instead of uh, log attendance, we're going to say report attendance. All right. And then I've got um, a bunch of alternate use case, uh, a bunch of alternate flows that I have to be able to take uh, care of. Uh, student cancels logging. So uh, I, I, I wanted to make sure that at any point, the student could decide to stop logging in. Okay. And I had to decide what's well, I going to have a cancel button or not, or just a way to, for instance, log out. And I decided on the latter. Uh, student not registered for any classes. Uh, this is the case where the system says, Oh, great. Um, you know, I don't know you. I'm not, I'm not, uh, managing attendance for any classes that I believe that you're in. Um, so I need to catch that error. Uh, student can't find the desired class. So the student looks through the list of classes, but they don't see it on the list. So I want to be able to respond to that. I want to be able to, um, I want to also be able to respond to a student, um, entering an incorrect class meeting uh, password. Um, and also, student attempts to, it's now report attendance outside of permitted hours. OK, so you can only report attendance while you're there. So I came up with this idea of having a class meeting being active for the, the time that the class uh, was um, going on and 15 minutes before and after. Okay. Apart from that, if you try to, to report attendance against a class meeting that's not active, well, 
you're going to get an error. Okay, and there's um, preconditions which I think are interesting. Before starting the use case, a student must have successfully completed the login use case resulting in permission being granted for the role of student. Okay, and uh, post conditions, uh, system has logged or reported student attendance for, for the proper class meeting in the database. And unsuccessful post uh, condition, no changes have been made to the state of the database. Okay, so that's the way that looks. Now, um, here's what I would recommend. If you, uh, if you haven't already looked at the uh, tutorial that I created for the prototype, now this would be a good time to pause this and go look at the tutorial for the prototype because you'll see in my instructions to the user um, just how the application is supposed to work. Okay? And once you've seen that, then um, looking uh, with me at Axure RP, which is what we're about to do, and the features I use to make the prototype go will make a lot more sense. Okay? So, uh, off to do that. And you're back now. And we're going to look into how this was done within Axure. So uh, here's my project open in Axure. And um, I I'm not going to do a how-to on all the features. Uh, I think that the videos that exist on the Axure website um, or in on uh, lynda.com do a better job of that than I ever could. But um, I just want to show you what I did after having... Uh, 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 mastered the tool to the extent that, that I have. Uh, first of all, I uh, decided that I was going to have a single page. Okay, I'm not sure this is a good decision, but this is the decision I have for the prototype so far. Okay, I have, uh, I have a single page uh, called Login. And the content within the page changes based upon these uh, dynamic panels. So what we see here is uh, the first of the uh, pages, uh, the first of the panels, enter login. So instead of having a bunch of pages, I have a bunch of uh, panels for a single page. Okay, and... Um, the panel has what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different states. So I could have done this with 14 pages, um, but I did it with a single page in 14 states. Now, having finished and looking at it more critically, I think that uh, doing uh, some of the work, like uh, reporting attendance um, on a page that's called login, is probably not a good idea. <laughs> okay, so I should probably have uh, more than one page. And, uh, you know, the states that relate to login, okay, that's fine. They could be associated with the login page. And the states that relate more to the use cases of the attendance uh, system itself, I think I would probably have a second or a third page for that. But the way the uh, conditional logic works in Axure, um, it doesn't really matter if you're changing the state of one of these uh, dynamic uh, panels on your page or you're changing a page. Um, you pretty much uh, it can do either one. Okay? So, uh, Here's the login page, and I've got uh, your typical uh, text uh, fields and a typical submit uh, button, which I pulled on from the, the palette over here. Um, 
I didn't do anything particularly special with these apart from the password um, control. I um, I just oh, sorry, I'm not on the password control. And why am I not on the password control? I don't know. Perhaps we want to be over here with style. Uh, that's not really behaving the way it should. So, oh, I'm seeing I'm on the I'm on the entire panel. I want to be clicked in on um, the um, the state called enter login form. So let me go there. Okay. And as you can see, I don't I uh, I don't have the banner. I don't have the nav bar. I didn't use the nav bar in the end, but I thought that was a, a good part of the overall design. Those of you who have seen my um, weekly schedule web app will see that I took the uh, graphic design from that. That's kind of a that's a design that I think is neat and tasteful, but not particularly artistic. And because um, my emphasis in this course is on the interaction rather than the art, um, that's uh, good enough for me. Perhaps you're a better artist than I am, and I look forward to seeing your work. So uh, here, when I go to the password field and I right click on it, I can come down to input type. And uh, this is a password type. I set this as a password type uh, so that I get the behavior that I uh, want. Okay. Um, the uh, the paragraph that I have here um, at this point it's just a normal paragraph, although I I thought it it had a, a special style. Okay, it's supposed to have a style. Uh, called um, in body text. Okay, and I, I don't know why it didn't have that, but uh, it seems to do okay. Uh, and then I've got these. Um, so how did I set up a a, uh, a common style? Well, I went over here to uh, the I was in, in the style tab, so I was. Uh, I uh, 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 selected the element I wanted to style, uh, came over here and went to the style tab. And then um, it, instead of picking one of the styles that was already there, like heading or paragraph or whatever, I uh, clicked on this manage style widgets and I went and I created with the plus and some of the picking. I paid, I created a style for uh, that. Okay. The other things that I created a, a custom style for were these links, right? So these links, I uh, if I click on one of them, uh, it has a style called in body link, and if I go to the editor, you can see that this in body link. Um, uh, is the uh, style for the link before we mouse over it. And then I created one in body link mouse over and one in body link mouse down. Okay, and that's how I, I got my uh, that's how I got my behavior in these uh, links. And uh, that's how I was able to not have to redefine it over and over again, which was good. Now this uh, this uh, heading is just uh, heading one, which makes uh, sense. So um, let's look at some of the the other states of the panel that I created. And again, do these have to be, did I have to use the panel states? No, I didn't. I actually have used them for kind of their trivial um, use because um, 
I'm really changing out the whole page, right? So I could have gone to another page, but I wanted to use the panel feature. I was, I was excited about it. Uh, so from enter login, where can I go? Well, if I don't if it succeed in the login, I can go to a login error. Uh, if I do succeed with the login, then I go on to choose the course. I go so I could either go to login error or choose course. Okay. Um, let's look at um, uh, both of those. So let's look at login error. So login error wasn't too hard to uh, create. It it had the I. Um, I took the first uh, state that I had, this enter login form that I was on, and I right clicked and I said I wanted to duplicate the state. Uh, and so then I had a duplicate, I had to change the name, I changed the name to login error. And I just went about uh, changing, um, changing the title and uh, the content, and uh, I had to change uh, some of the links. I decided I wanted to have a close by link oriented navigation here because it's just my experience in using these uh, login dialogues that that's how people handle uh, the different alternative uh, paths um, rather than having uh, some kind of a nav bar that keeps uh, changing its layout. And uh, the other thing was that the nav bar, I didn't see an easy way to have uh, several versions of the nav bar and switch the nav bar out depending upon uh, the state. Um, although I could probably have done that with a banner, I guess. Okay, I'm sorry. I probably could have done that with, with its own um, uh, dynamic panel, I guess, to uh, some extent. But I was already using the dynamic panel feature, wasn't I? Okay, so from here, uh, you can go back to trying to log in again or realize you need to register or um, request a password reset, right? Now, how do we get to either log in error or choose course? Let's look at choose course. Choose course, uh, again, uh, change the content, put on a, a, uh, a uh, select uh, control. Um, was able to configure it by uh, right clicking and doing edit list items. Okay. I started with this add many where I could put all the lines that I listed, but after that, um, I think I did the first two that way, and then the last one, this course is not listed, is one I added later, so I did that by uh, just adding one line at a time. Okay, so that's how I got that. Um, I, I realized that I had a requirement to be able to cancel at any time, so instead of having a cancel button, I decided that, that I, I would have... Uh, I'd use the paradigm where if you wanted to continue, you you would uh, click uh, submit, and if you wanted to go somewhere else, you would look for one of these links. So I only wanted the uh, submit to be button oriented. I didn't go with the submit and cancel uh, kind of motif, which I think is a little bit old school. Um, and then interestingly. Um, a lot of the prototyping power that I was able to harness came out of um, the properties that I was able to associate with the submit buttons. Okay, so if I go to the submit a button and highlight that, well, let's go back. Let's not look at how they work here. Let's look at how they worked on, on that login uh, form. So I'm going to go back up and look at the state enter login form. Uh, click on the submit button, okay, and uh, it's the properties I'm interested in, 
and as we can see here we have um, we have a case um, we have actually two cases uh, for how how to implement this and um, the first thing I did is I just uh, created the cases um, one that uh, switched it to the uh, um, one that's one that switched it to where does it go it goes to uh, oh choose course I can't quite see it here because it's yeah choose course right one that went there and then the other one so let me cancel that the other one um, went goes to login error okay and so for the first version, I didn't put any conditions on these uh, cases. And so what happened is that when I clicked the submit uh, button, I just got um, uh, a kind of another dialog with two buttons in it that, the, it that said, I have to pick the case that I want. And it displayed the names. And then I, I clicked on uh, choose course and uh, I clicked on... Um, or maybe I, I, I call them like valid input, invalid input, and I would click on those. Okay, and that was a great way to get the prototype moving along and not having not have to learn about this uh, conditional logic. So I got a lot of the prototype uh, built with um, setting up the cases for the buttons. Uh, such that I just enumerated the cases and I, I picked uh, what, how they were going to change the state of the dynamic panel. Um, I guess I could have said instead of that we're going to navigate to another page, right? So I just did that and I didn't um, sort of automatically put in the logic that would take it to the right panel based upon the inputs. Okay, so it was a rough kind of a prototype that was not very user friendly. All right. Um, once I, I got a, mm, a handful of these to work, then I thought, well, let's go back and see if I can really uh, get some power out of the tool. And let's, um, when I click the buttons, what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually look at the input that I have um, and take me to the right place accordingly. So that's what I've done here. So the first case that I have, uh, I call them valid login, uh, login and login error. And valid login, if I go there, um, you can associate a condition up here. Okay. And this is uh, two conditions, one through each of the fields. So you have to name the controls. I called one email field and the other password field. And I said email field equals value. And I have a magic email address, scholarj at uwm.edu. And I have a magic password secret. So if in fact you give that combination, then it will run the case for a valid login, which is going to take you to the panel uh, choose course. On the other hand, I just set the other case up to do the opposite. So if you go up and you look at the edit condition on that, um, it's the same controls, it's the same values, but it does not equal instead of equal. Okay, and so because of that, and then where does this go? Um, this one goes to uh, login error. Okay, so if I um, preview this now, you can see that I, if I just put um, anything into email and anything into password, I'm going to go 
to the error page. Uh, if I retry and I do scholar j at uwm.edu and give her secret password, uh, then we're going to go to the right spot. I just want to point out while I'm here that I have uh, put notes on each of these controls for um, the user of the prototype to, to be able to remember what the valid values are. So if you click on um, either of those, here you can see what the proper email address is, and here you can see what the proper password is. These would not be part of the, the production application, but I think they work well for the prototype. Um, so I've got the proper email and password, and I click Submit, and there we are. And so now we've come down to the course, and uh, we're picking from the courses that the, the system knows that this particular user, identified by their email address, um, are registered for that are being administered by the um, attendance system. And uh, we also have the, the ability for the user to say, hey, my course is not listed. Now, in terms of um, some helper notes, I put an explanation here to what, what we're seeing. Okay, just kind of what I just said. All right, so that's how I made all those things uh, work. Let's look uh, at what other features I might have used. Okay, so um, from this uh, Choose Course, uh, where can we go? So let's look at Choose Course. We have to pick one of these uh, three. Um, systems analysis senior capstone or course not listed and um, what I did was I, I created a panel uh, I guess by using pages I could have created a page one for each of those three okay um, and I I had them represent three alternative uh, paths that we could go down. Okay, so I decided that if you chose systems analysis that um, you would get the opportunity to report attendance. Uh, if you chose senior capstone, you would um, you would get a class meeting not active error. And this, uh, this actually took some thought because um, when you go through the prototype here, okay, if in fact you try to uh, report your attendance against systems and uh, systems analysis, and you go to that page or panel, um, it says what the duration of the class is, but it's only going to go there if it's that time right now. I was trying to find a way to um, kind of set the prototyper up to know what time it was and, and all that kind of stuff. And I really backed off and I said, why don't I create just one prototype scenario where it's the right time of day so we get to report attendance. So that's what we did for this um, uh, when they choose uh, systems analysis. But the other one was uh, uh, if you choose uh, Senior Capstone, you go to the error panel, class meeting not active. Okay, so all you really need to do is to demonstrate the kind of places that you can go. You don't have to make the, the uh, control over how you get there. Uh, fancy and data dependent, All right? So if we go into the preview uh, for this, 
and we'll go down to our friend Scholar J at uwm.edu and give her secret password again. Uh, again, if we pick uh, 340 systems analysis, then we get the chance to report attendance. But if we uh, had picked uh, 490 senior capstone, we're assuming that this is just an example of what happens when you're not in the proper time period. Okay, so there isn't really anything in the logic that controls that. You just have to know that the prototype it demonstrates the one case and the other case, and it's up to the person who's using the prototype to be able to, uh, to tell the difference. Okay. And um, how did we do that? Well, let's just go back to uh, choose a course. And the submit button has uh, cases associated with it. And it's got three cases. Uh, Infos 340 selected, that's uh, systems analysis. Course not listed, Infos 490 selected. And in each case, it goes to the proper uh, panel or if you prefer a uh, page. Um, trying to think of some other features I used. I didn't really, I can't really think of any other uh, features. Well, uh, yes, I can, I can say this. So if we go up to this uh, login page, okay, now we see the whole page, all right? There are two um, masters. So I've got the banner, which is this area up here, the dark area, that's a master. And then I've got the nav bar, and that's a master too. And again, I didn't really do anything with either of those. I pulled them onto my one page and I left them there. But uh, potentially as I get into uh, other parts of, of the application, um, I'm going to be uh, using the nav bar. So I'm looking forward to that. So that's uh, pretty much what I've done. Uh, the use cases, I've done uh, two, uh, two of the use cases. I've done the login and I've done the report attendance. In terms of how many screens I have, I think I've really got about 12 or 14, uh, something like that, well above the minimum of three that I had set for the assignment. Um, but that's what it really took to get the use cases done, and um, um, I'm finally done. So I hope this gives you some idea about how you might go about this um, high-fidelity prototyping assignment with the Axure tool, if you choose to use that, um, and maybe get some ideas about, about uh, things that you might do with alternative tools. So... Having done that, I'm going to say bye until next time. Bye-bye.